My best wishes and blessings to all of you at uh, Indian Institute of Management, Trichy, and also for your conference. It is really wonderful that uh, you are very forward-looking, that you are thinking of going ahead of the technologies that are coming by, which could change the fundamentals of how we function on this planet. It is very important management schools are ahead of the technological developments so that uh, we use technologies for everybody's well-being. Disruption not just for the sake of disruption, disruption to bring a new level of order, a new level of function, a new level of capability and above all, a new level of well-being to everyone in the world. Once again, my best wishes and blessings to all of you. We are at a time that when it comes to education, we are in a cusp where our fundamental thinking about what is education needs to go through not a change but a complete transformation. A time is coming where acquiring knowledge will be of no value. A time is coming where scholarship will be laughed at. A time is coming where projecting data accumulation as intelligence is going to be a thing of the past. Projecting good memory as intelligence is going to go away, which is the very foundations of the education systems of the day. Whoever has good memory is rated as the most intelligent person. Well, today you know your cell phone has better memory than you. That's why we call the phone smartphone. You wouldn't call somebody smart unless they were smarter than you. Hello? If you call the phone as smart, obviously it is smarter than you. Because our idea of being smart is about how much GB do you carry? Some of our phones are six hundred GB. Believe me, you don't have that kind of memory. This whole process of accumulating information, assimilating it, processing it, and throwing out bits and pieces out as knowledge, whether it is scientific knowledge or religious stuff, that by reading a book, projecting yourself as intelligent is going to go away because machines will do it far better than you and me. Machine learning or artificial intelligence as it is being built today is essentially about how much data can you gather, process and express. Unfortunately, for the last few centuries, I would say for nearly 250 years across the world, education meant just this, accumulating data, vomiting it somewhere, usually in the examination paper, I mean. And you're rated as brilliant. I must tell you, well, he was uh, telling you that I was also in a regional school, demonstration multipurpose school. When I was thirteen years of age, for the first time, I saw a calculator, a flatbed calculator. It's not like today, a two-year-old is handling a smartphone or iPad or something. I saw a calculator for the first time when I was thirteen years of age. It was a flatbed, flatbed calculator. Those days there were only two companies making this, Panasonic and Sony. Sony was very expensive, one hundred and twenty-five rupees. Panasonic, you could go to one of those uh, Burma bazaars or Hong Kong market or whatever you called it, with little bargaining power you got it for ninety rupees. So everybody bought Panasonic, a ninety rupee flatbed calculator. 
Somebody brought this to school and it was a miracle. Tuk, 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 into tuk, 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 tuk. I looked at this, immediately my first thought was, if it, this is this simple, why are they torturing me in the mathematics classes? <laughs> why are they trying to teach me this into that, that into this, a cos? It could even do all the sine and cos and all that stuff. I said, everything is here, why are they torturing me? I sat there and imagined a day when these kind of machines will come, which will know all the chemistry formulas, all the physics stuff and mathematics and everything, so that I don't have to come to school. Well, I rarely went, but even that little bit of force that I had to be there. This dream of mine, fifty years ago, is slowly coming true now, in the next ten years it's going to be real, that everything that you can learn from a book and remember, a machine can do it better than you and me. These are great times for human beings. Lot of people, <laughs> you know, <laughs> It's crazy, they're inviting me to artificial intelligence conferences in various places. I was in uh, St. Petersburg and I was supposed to speak on artificial intelligence. I said, why of all the people you chose me? I'm not artificial intelligence, I thought I was a little natural <laughs> They said, no, no, the problem is we will all lose our jobs, what are we supposed to do? I said, you always been cursing Monday morning when you have to go to work. If you lose your job, isn't it fantastic you're on a vacation? If machines do all the work, isn't it really fantastic? See, this is like the coolie in the port at one time. In probably sixties and seventies, he complained heavily because the cranes and gantries came and they started lifting the load off the ship and putting it effortlessly. These guys, there was a time, I'm telling you, in Mumbai dock, in the Mazagon the dock, if a ship came, those… those vessels were not of the size that they are today. Usually they were hundred, hundred fifty thousand ton uh, vessels. If they came, they would unload it for over three to four months. Today a quarter million ton vessel comes in the major ports, within twenty-four hours, it is unloaded. Of course, all the labor who had built their muscles just to carry sacks, they all complained, if these machines come, they will destroy our life. Did they or not? All the trade unions complained or not at that time? Hello? So similarly, teachers should not complain and make the same mistake that the coolies did at that time. So what will we do if all machine learning comes? It'll be great time because how much memory you carry on your head will not be of value. What kind of a human being you are will be the highest value. Isn't it fantastic time for human beings? <clears throat> the keenness of your perception, the sharpness of your intelligence will be more important than the volume of memory you carry in your head. These are good times, real good times for human beings to unfold because this cargo of so-called knowledge is killing human beings. Just ramping up information into a child's head in many ways killing the fundamental genius that every human being carries within themselves. I see if machine learning becomes… comes very quickly, in our generation we can see children blossoming into highest levels of intelligence, unfolding of genius will happen because right now this heap that you have to carry on your head, try to remember all those things cos theta, sin theta is driving you crazy. When a simple machine can do it, human intelligence is of a different nature. We should never un misunderstand memory as intelligence. Memory makes a few things simple, but it doesn't find excess. Memory is always of the past, isn't it? 
Hello? Can memory unfold the future? If you invest in memory, you will only repeat the past, a modified past as future. This is what is happening to human societies. If past should not be repeated, if we have to live a fresh life in the next moment, in tomorrow, if our tomorrow has to be different from yesterday, it is very important that human beings learn not to invest in memory. We use memory. If the machine carries it, we can use it and leave it. What we want, we can take it. What we don't want, we can leave it. But carrying it with you all the time, people are becoming recycling of the past all the time. Because once you have invested in memory, everything that you have is just re recycling of the data that you have already gathered. This is in many ways really stifling the human genius. Every human being has a certain element of genius in them. It is only a question of will we be able to provide the right kind of ambience for that particular genius to unfold. This is a challenge. This should be the challenge of the teachers of tomorrow. How do we provide that atmosphere to each unique human being so that they can unfold? That should be the only challenge we must be handling as teachers and people who are in charge of schools. But right now, our ninety percent of the focus is how to ram memory into their heads. This… this is a time that all of you as educationists, you are at a point where the sooner we transform our education system, the better edge our children will have for the future in the world. How quickly we shift to machine learning will determine where India will be in another thirty to forty years' time.